Hello everybody, it's Danny back from Deep South Homestead on porch time. Guys, I'm actually back on the porch at the cabin. It's Sunday morning. It's uh, 8.30. I just got back from Pecan Grove, feeding the cows and watering everything over there. Um, it's pretty warm this morning. It's uh, the 27th of August. They got us for 105 temperature today. Heat index about 118. And I thought maybe if I could get over here this morning and get this done, there's very little breeze blowing. Occasionally a little puff will come through. And, but the locusts are like deafening out here this morning. It's the first morning they've been this bad. And I don't know if they know something. Uh, usually they come and go, but this morning it's just non-stop. At Pecan Grove it was that way. Here it's that way. Uh, it's amazing. Nature has a way of just knowing things. Um, uh, the ponds are about seven foot low now. We've had no moisture. The sugar cane is almost to die, to be honest with you. It don't look good at all. Uh, we dug a little bit of the sweet potatoes. We hadn't dug much. It's just a dust bed. Guys, it's just... I've been through a lot of hot summers. You know, I'm 60-something years old, mid-60s. I've been through a lot of hot summers. But this has been the hottest summer that I think I've ever lived through. And and I know everybody go, oh, it's just August, it's always hot. No, this year is different than any other year. And I mean, I left here in 2000 and went to New York because the temperature here was so bad. But this surpasses the year 2000 like it's, it was sitting still. So something, you know, this they're using this word heat dome over the top of us. They use the word dome. Something that's never been used before to my knowledge. And there's got to be some connection to that. Now they're saying that uh, today or, to, or, or Tuesday or Wednesday of this coming week, which fourth time will come out on Tuesday, that we should be getting some cool down. But I looked at our temperatures. We're still 98, 99. I mean, not really a cool down for us. Now, if we get some rain, yeah, that would be nice to have. But temperature-wise, we they're just saying we won't be in the triple digits. Now, the news channels here are talking about, oh, what a blessing it'll be just to be in the 90s again. And, and guys, when you say just being in the 90s again is a blessing, that tells you that it's been extreme. So... It is what it is. We can't change it. and nothing we can do about it. We just have to learn to live with it. Now, I'm having to do this kind of stuff on Sundays. And I do, I've shot a lot more of my videos today and yesterday because I'm gone a lot during the week. In, in that, what I'm noticing, and I want to kind of talk on a little bit today on porch time, is that through all the analyzing and everything that's being done, people... People are living in the past. Now, the thing is, why are people living in the past? That's what's trying to be figured out. Why are so many people living in the past? There's nothing wrong with remembering the past. Because, you know, someone who forgets the past, I mean, that's, that's setting you up for failure. And... There's nothing wrong with that. Now, um, creating great memories of the past is nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, that's, that's, that's healthy because lots of times many people plan on living their life after they retire, and then when they get to retirement age, they have a stroke or heart attack or something that happens to them, and they never really get to, uh, to live their dream and then all they have to fall back on are memories. And that's perfectly okay to be that way. 
As a matter of fact, I always tell people, live every day like it's your last day because there will come a day when you'll wish you had. Because, I mean, Scripture even teaches us to enjoy the days of our youth before the evil days come upon us. And, you know, when it talks about the evil days, it's talking about not necessarily that everything's just going to be evil and bad, but we won't feel as good as we did when we were younger. Our bodies won't work like they used to work. Things will just be different with us. You know, we can't get out and do what we used to do and all this kind of stuff. And, and we will literally call them the evil days. So, don't live in the past. I'm, I'm coming in contact with more and more people that are stuck in the past. They're having a very hard time accepting the changes that are coming, uh, the things that's going on with the earth, and all this is scriptural. It's all mentioned in the in the scriptures. It's not like it's something that we don't know is coming because the Bible tells us all these things are coming. I mean, you you take in Revel a Revelation or let's just say in Scripture. I'm not going to even go because lots of people get all wound up out of shape when I start doing that. In Scripture, you know, it talks about men will curse God because the heat. They will be scorched by heat. They will literally curse God because of it. And you don't know how many people, and, and, you know, and I'm, I don't curse God, but I sure do have a lot of questions about it. But I mean, I know the answer. That it's not like I don't know the answer because I do. But a lot of the people that I come in contact with, they don't understand the heat. What is going on? This is man-made. No, it's... Unfortunately, this is not man-made. This is part of the solar system, and it's coinciding. God knew this was going to happen, and God talks about this in Scripture. He talks about the, the scorching heat. And it's all predetermined to happen in the latter days of an age. Now... When I say living in the past, so many people want everything to be like it used to be. And, and, and to a degree, I wish things could be somewhat simpler than what they are now. But it's not the world we live in. The world we live in today is advanced so much that unless you understand the technology that's going on today, your children won't make it. In other words, they will not have what it takes. Now, I've got, I'm not an advocate of sending kids off to a college and having them indoctrinated by some liberal professor. Now, I'm not an advocate of that. But what I am an advocate of is teaching a child how to learn. The biggest issues in the system today is that people don't know how to learn. We see this on our YouTube channel all the time. We get emails and comments and stuff. And I look at these comments and I go, where in the heck did they come up with that at? That is not even what I said. People read into things what they want to see in something. And that's, that's just a simple byproduct of the past. And we got to understand that we're not going to be able to live in the past all the time. I somewhat have been guilty of this in gardening. Um, the way that we've raised things and done things in the past will not work now. Now, there are elements of it, yes, that will work. But as a whole, because of what the earth is doing and the, uh, the, the climate change is going on on the earth right now, uh, the things that I did when I was a kid growing up helping my father and, and then when I was a young man gardening and, you know, selling my truck crops and stuff like that, uh, those techniques... They don't work anymore. 
Now I get some results if I do it, but I don't get really major results like I need. The plants are just not as healthy. You know, I mean, and it is so sad. But I, what I'm going to say is, just listen to what I'm saying. A lot of the heirloom seeds just don't produce anymore. The, uh, the heat destroys them. The insects destroy them. I mean, blights, diseases, everything just destroys the plants. And we're having to flip over to some hybrids in order to be able to uh, to even get a harvest of any kind with things. Uh, tomatoes is becoming one of the main ones. Now, there's a lot of good varieties out there that still do pretty well. Uh, I still raise my heirloom tomatoes. I still like my Amish paste. You know, that seems to be the better tomato for me here. Um, there's a, two or three other varieties that do fairly well here. But as a whole, lots of things. Like I'll give you, for instance, pole beans. I love pole beans. I love picking pole beans. I love eating pole beans. But now we have a, a bug and a disease here in the deep south that makes it very hard to raise pole beans. If I plant pole beans, there's a bug called a kudzu bug. They will wrap them plants up by the hundreds of thousands of them and just destroy the plants. And if the humidity stays too high, like this year it's been hot and the humidity's been high, then the blight just runs up them and kills them. They just, they don't never really produce it. We'll get one crop, but that's about it. We've learned that if we go with the bush beans, which is hard on me since I've messed my knee up to get down the ground uh, and sit on something to try to pick them, but they do better. If I space them out and not put them just one right up against the other, they, they gotta have some space so some air can get between them. That's very hard when you're planting because it seems like you're just planting too far apart. You're wasting a lot of ground. But if you want a decent harvest, you know, you've got to do that. When I was a kid, we put stuff six inches apart and just poured it down through the ground. And when it come up, we pulled out or hoed out the plants we didn't want and left them about six inches apart or eight inches apart. And they bore like crazy. No, no longer than one and I have been married, which has been 10 years. When we first got married, we could plant green beans here and guys we picked them by the five gallon bucket pools i mean just it was nothing for us we had just tons of them now we have failed to get a green bean to grow here just about we've switched over to the cherokee yellow wax bean and we had some really good luck with it but it's all about finding what's going on. We can't do what we did in the past because and that's what I'm trying to work through on gardening so I can put this information out there, what we learn, to help others, especially first-time gardeners because it's very difficult for a first-time gardener to get started into gardening and then have a total failure. This year, you don't know how many emails we've got for people who are first-time gardeners, nothing grows. I mean, what a disappointment. And that's what I'm trying to come up with ways to help the young, not necessarily young, but new gardeners and, and make gardening a, a joyable experience for them where they can see some, uh, you know, some productivity from it. But now, also living in the past, we've got to be careful that we don't live in the past mentally. I, I, I'm friends with a couple of people right now who are very, very stuck in the past. They, uh, it breaks my heart, but they, they can't let go of anything. You know, the old houses that they live in still got all the same old furniture that their grandparents had in it. And, and it's just, run down and, and the bedrooms are still set up just like they were and and I'm like man you gotta change this stuff well that that's the way mom and pop had it and I'm like mom and pop ain't here no more 
They don't know what's going on. You're the one who's destroying yourself. Change this house, you know? And, I mean, there's some things in psychology that, you know, that, that goes along with that. I'm not going to get into that. But, guys, we've got to quit living in the past, and we've got to learn to move forward. We've got to change with the times. If we did not, if we do not change with the times, then we get left behind. And there's nothing wrong with doing things the old-fashioned way. Because I, I have the grist mill I'm working on. I love doing it, providing food to an old-fashioned grist mill. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I make cane syrup. Nothing wrong with doing it that way. Now, is there more? new advanced ways of doing it? And the answer is absolutely yes. Is the cost astronomical? The answer is yes. You know, when I first started cooking cane syrup, when I was in my 20s, I would cook cane syrup and I could sell it in, the, in stores in town. I could just, I could go everywhere and sell my syrup in the, in the metal cans. I, oh yeah, we'd love to have your cane syrup. Never a question asked for about a health reason. Now, it is forbidden, you know, to sell stuff that has not been inspected and all this kind of stuff. Th those days are just gone. I mean, we live in a new world today. And in order to set up and have a facility to do that, you're talking about lots and lots and lots of money. You know, the old Meadows Mill, I got the 1940 model, grist mill. Does it work? And the answer is absolutely yes. It does work. Uh... But Meadows has new electric powered mills that are really highly efficient. I mean, and if you was going to be selling this stuff, that, you know, they probably would be health requirements on having that kind of stuff inspected. And they would probably want to see those kind of mills used and stuff. I've looked at a lot of the new Meadows mills and they are like super nice. You know, I mean, they do a fantastic job. But you know what? I don't mind the older ways for my own personal use. Some quick information. I have heard that there's things coming down the pipe that will put a try, let's say, let's say, let's say try to put a damper on me making my own cornmeal, me cooking my own syrup, me canning my own vegetables because quote unquote I don't know what I'm doing I'm liable to do something that makes that might be harmful for me according to you know who so it's very possible in the future that there will be laws made that will try to do away with that you know how will the how will things go at that point? That will be an probably be on an individual basis with everybody as to how far you're willing to go. Me personally, I probably don't probably not going to be one that's going to be very easy to get along with. I'll just go ahead and say it because I'm not stuck in the past. And I'm not adapting to the future. Now, there are certain aspects of the future that we have no control over. The Lord has set into motion a sequence of events that uh, is spoken of in Revelation and Ezekiel and Daniel and Hosea and Jeremiah and Isaiah, all these different books about end time events that are going to take place. We have no control over them. It does no good to sit and say, well, I don't like this and I'm going to try to change it. It's not going to work. You're not going to change it because if the Lord has put it into motion, it's going to happen. Now, what we have to understand is this. If the Lord put it into motion, it's for our benefit if we're a, a brother and sister in the Lord. It's for our benefit. It's not to be against us. It's for our homecoming. 
And it's not directed at us. So we have to understand that it's a time for us to be joyful, even though it may not seem like it's joyful at the time. We have to understand this is a sequence of events that must take place. It's spoken of in uh, uh, the Olivet Discourse, uh, Matthew chapter 24. If you read that chapter, uh, the Lord explains to the disciple a sequence of events that will take place. And these things must, he said, must come to pass. What are some of them? Wars? Rumors of wars? Have we had those? That's been throughout history. We've had wars and rumors of wars. Uh, earthquakes in diverse places. In other words, that's unusual places. There's always been earthquakes in specific places, but he's talking about now there'll be earthquakes in unusual places. Um, yeah, there's just he goes on to just give us a whole list of things. Kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation. You know, lots of things will rise up. Lots of things will fall. These are all events that will begin to happen. Now, this has happened throughout history, but in the end time, what he's talking about is a lot of these things will be simultaneously. We will have the uh, we'll have the earthquakes. We'll have the wars. We'll have rumors of wars. We'll have uh, pestilences, famines, diseases. All these things that's spoken of there. We'll have these will all be simultaneously. Uh, the scorching heat. All these kind of things will happen all at once within a short period of time. Now, yes, there's been periods of history where people thought they were living in the end times during the Great World Wars and uh, I'm sure during the Dark Ages and stuff like this. People, you know, thought they were living in the end times then. The bottom line is this, guys. Don't dwell on the past. The past was given to us as a learning experience. It's, it's put there for us to look back on and to glean on. Uh, the scripture said when the Lord was uh, was born unto Mary, that later on He set His face like a flint toward Calvary. In other words, He had an end goal in His in mind. He did not take His eyes off of it. Uh, the Apostle Paul talks about not looking back at the past, but pressing forward to the future. Guys, that's what we have to do. We've got to learn to press forward, to keep our eyes on the mark, and to keep moving forward, and to not necessarily adapt to everything, but like the heat and the extreme cold, like I've told y'all for years that this was coming, uh, we have to learn to adapt to the intense heat. What's the best crops to grow? I gave a tip on the live stream the other night talking about that. What's the best trees, to fruit trees to grow during these times? Uh, if the weather turns off extremely cold, what do we do? What do we grow? I talked about that in my tip. There's lots of things that we have to learn to adapt to. Now, I don't believe in adapting to immoral issues. I do not believe in that. But there's certain things in technology like YouTube here. Uh, we have to learn if we want to learn stuff while it's available. Because let me say this. Uh, YouTube has given us a whole new set of rules. And with that new set of rules, I'm not sure that a lot of the videos I've made in the past breaks those rules. And I'm not 100% sure how many videos I'll have that'll be taken down or if they'll even just take my channel down. So what I'm telling people is, if you want valuable information that we've put out, don't put it, don't, don't download books, don't uh, don't do the ebook stuff and then just leave it on the computer. Guys, you need to write it down on paper with pencil or pen because at any moment, just like uh, YouTube in the past has pulled things down and 
uh, has made us stop doing specific things. Like there was a while there we couldn't do butchering videos. Uh, there was a while there that we couldn't have children in videos. There was, you know, there was, and, and I understand uh, some of these issues, especially with children and stuff like that because of pedophiles and things of this nature. But guys, we we're being censored really, really bad. And if you want honest, good information, and it's still available, uh, that technology is out there for us right now. In the past, we didn't have this technology. If we wanted to find out something, even in the early 80s or late 70s, if we wanted to find out something, we had to read a book. And now it's at our fingertips. And it's there for our taking and our learning. So we have to grab it while we can, write it down on paper, I tell people in my videos, if you like what I'm saying and you want, if it's tidbits, you don't, don't count on going back and looking at the video, write it down. Because they could pull the video because of one word I said that might not have been meant to be spoken that way, you know, uh, or taken the wrong way. Because of the society we live in today, everybody takes everything the wrong way. So we've got to get out of the past. we got to learn from the past. And we got to press forward, and we got to learn to adapt to the climates that we're dealing with, the way the food system is going to be, all the different things in life. We got to learn to adapt to, so that we can survive what's coming. And like I told you before, continue to build your faith because you're going to need it. When the things become exposed, that. Uh, that we didn't want to believe in because we were stuck in the past, it's going to shake our faith. So we got to learn to get out of get out of the past, and we got to learn to be open to things that are happening or are going to happen based on scripture. Now, not not stupid stuff, but based on scripture, and and not freak out because of it. And it's going to be tough. I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to be tough because these things that I find out that's going to happen, and I'm like. Lord, how will we survive or how will we make it? And, and he's assured me that, you know, if I seek him first, then he will provide or make a way for me to provide for myself however we have to. So guys, today the locust is about to drive my ears crazy here, and I'm pretty sure y'all can hear them too. Um... I've got to, uh, I've got to get back busy. The heat's starting to build now. It has gotten screaming hot since I sit down here. Sweat keeps running down my forehead. I hear y'all notice I keep wiping it. <laughs> so I'm gonna get out of this heat and uh, go see if I can't get busy. Uh, maybe doing some more Danny corn or something like that that I can enjoy doing in a little bit cooler temperature. So guys, stick with us. Hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell because. And a thumbs up if you like the videos because that puts us into a better algorithm. We're being shadow banned pretty bad because we try to spread the truth and the truth is not what they want out there today. So guys, uh, keep us in your prayers. We'll keep you in our prayers and let's move forward. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.